Hello, I am the Greek Geek because I am Greek and indeed a geek. And yes, I realise this review is very late. Anyway, I'm here to talk about it now. Gellert Grindelwald escapes prison and is on the run from the Auras and the Ministry of Magic. And he begins to gain supporters to his cause. Meanwhile, Newt Scamander is trying to restore his international travel rights. Riveting stuff. Most of the main cast from the previous movie returns to reprise their roles in this movie. We have Eddie Redmayne playing Newt Scamander, Catherine Waterson playing Tina Goldstein, Alison Sudol as Queenie Goldstein, Dan Fogler as Jacob Kowalski. Wait, didn't he get his memory wiped? Ezra Miller as Credence. Wait, didn't he die in the last movie? And of course, Johnny Depp as Grindelwald. And we have some new characters like Zoe Kravitz who plays Lady Lestrange, must be a family member to the Lestrange family. We have Claudia Kim as Nagini. Wait, what? And Jude Law plays a young, sexy Dumbledore. So this movie has quite a few flaws, as I'm sure you're aware of by now. But the acting, for the most part, is solid throughout the movie. I couldn't think of a particularly bad performance. Now, the actors do do a good job of acting, but the characters in the film act differently than I thought they would have in the previous movie. Queenie does something that's a bit out of character, like putting Jacob under a love, a heavy love spell and basically abducts him and takes him to England, probably against his will. But he is... There's another thing that's very out of character, but I'll have to save that for a different video where I talk about spoilers. Newt seems quite obsessed with Tina in this movie. Like, he's really in love with her and really wants to see her. In the first movie, I only got there was only a slightly... Only a slight hint of a romantic interest between the two, not... Newt fully obsessing over her. Jude Law, I was afraid, was not going to be a good fit to play a young Dumbledore, but he actually does pretty good. I could see him as a young Dumbledore, but I have one question. When did Dumbledore go from wearing stylish suits to wearing extravagant wizard robes and hats? So Jacob having his memory wiped in the last movie and him opening his bakery, basically just brushed over. Bakery isn't even mentioned his dream, he doesn't even mention it, and him getting his memory wiped it didn't really happen, apparently. So what was the point of it in the first movie? I feel they only wanted to put him back in this movie for comedic relief. So J.K. Rowling wrote the script for this. We know that she can write some pretty decent books. I haven't read her other books outside of the Harry Potter books, but they are really good books and widely enjoyed by many, many people. But writing a script for a movie is very different, and it shows in this. Like, towards the end of the movie, there's about four or five plot twists um, in the space of, like, 15 minutes, just one after the other, and just each getting more ridiculous than the last. There's a lot of fan service that didn't really need to be there, and she outright um, retcons stuff that she has established in her previous movies, in the Harry Potter movies. It's just like the Dumbledore is gay thing all over again. Like, for example, Nagini, which is a human that has a blood curse and can turn into a snake and will eventually permanently be a snake. What was the point of having that in the movie? It adds nothing. And it, there was nothing hinting that in previous movies at all. So it baffles me, like, why she made this choice. Action is pretty dull, considering it's... They live in a world where magic is real and there's witches and wizards and all kind of magical beasts. The action is just kind of meh, dull to me, actually. Like, when people are dueling each other, they're just, they're basically shooting beams of light at each other, and it's not really that exciting. It's nothing like that du duel that we saw in Order of the Phoenix between Voldemort and Dumbledore. They don't really get creative with the magic, I feel. The sets do look pretty good for the time period of the 1920s and having the difference between the muggle world and the wizarding world. What I liked about the previous movie is it showed the wizarding world in America and the slight differences that it has compared to Britain. They do spend a bit of time in France. Don't really get to see any differences in the French wizarding world compared to anything else. They're just kind of there. The only thing that we saw is that they speak French and I assume are very good at surrendering. This movie is very special effect heavy. Of course, you would expect that. And they are pretty cool, I guess. The beasts do look pretty cool. There's this cat dragon thing that has like curtains for tails. That looked pretty cool. The seahorse, seaweed, water dragon thing. So I think this movie has fully moved away from the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them book. It, it was kind of loosely based on that 
to have the beasts in it. But now the beasts are just kind of there while it's just focusing on the Gellert Grindelwald war. I, I don't know what to call it. Gellert Grindelwald kerfuffle. I don't know what to call it. As a sequel, I feel it's a step down. I feel that's the best way to describe it. The first one didn't blow my mind. It was still a bit of a messy film in my opinion, but it was kind of fun and I enjoyed seeing The Wizarding World in America. But this movie doesn't really recapture any of that. It's a very messy movie and it seems like it's just trying to set up the next movie and the one after that. It's just there to set up future movies. Pros, we have a good cast, the acting is solid. The CGI and special effects are pretty decent, but nothing absolutely mind-blowing. I did like the sets and the look of the whole 1920s world. That was pretty cool. And the monsters did look really cool as well. So the cons are there's just lots of twists and some of them just don't make any sense. Action I felt was pretty boring. There was actually a point where I was nearly falling, falling asleep and that was during an action scene. That should not be happening. A lot of characters don't act the way that you thought they would act based on how they were established in the previous movie. Lots of retcons and lots of fan service for no reason and it's just annoying and <laughs> almost ruins the Harry Potter universe. I'm gonna say this movie is bad, but it's not great either. If you're a fan of the Harry Potter universe and the first movie, you will find something to enjoy from this movie. But if you're just a casual movie goer, you could probably just give this a miss. There's no, no real need to see it. Now I'm gonna make a separate video on my dislikes and the retcons and the characters acting out of character in a separate video. If I add it to this video, it's just gonna go for too long, so I'm gonna do a separate video just to keep this shorter. So, there are my thoughts. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. You can find me on social media. There's links to my videos down below. As always, thank you for watching.